Hey y'all, I'm Leslie Hooper and welcome to my channel. And I'm Steph Miramontes. And today we're going to be doing a dive into a woman. Um, I forgot her name. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're going to be reacting to Amber Lynn Reed, who is a woman with a YouTube channel here, and she is known for being on the larger size, 500 pounds, and is sharing her weight loss journey. But what I wanted to highlight about this is catching somebody in the midst of an emotional heat. And we did this with Mel Robbins recently. And so I thought we would share her experience as well. I always appreciate the honesty, the rawness of these conversations while they're happening, because it's very vulnerable to open up and share these kind of deep, dark secrets in our lives that we usually try to hide from people. So, all right, Steph, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's get started here. Hey, guys. So I wanted to be transparent i am very nervous about making this video and if you guys are seeing it it's because i had the balls to upload it um it is mother's day i am so just emotionally um broken today i i don't want to go into you know details why i'm sure you guys can probably process why so i'm going to be doing a lot of emotional eating and i already know it's going to happen because i have some food in front of me so I kind of want to make this video to show you guys how it is for me on a day where I just do not care. I want to eat all my feelings. I want to binge. I feel possessed for the whole day. Like I don't care. Like I'm not myself. Kind of like I'm on the outside watching. And I just wanted to show you guys kind of what that looks like for me. And it's unfortunate. And this is kind of just what it is. So this is a what I ate today binge. I don't know what to call this. So I'm going to show you guys the first thing I'm going to eat. So I ordered Mexican food. Here are the chips, Mexican rice, and we have some tamales. Honestly, this looks freaking delicious. So I am super pumped and I'm going to watch a TV show while I eat this and numb all my feelings so here i go okay so this is how much i've left of this and the rice i did eat some chips so it has been no more than a minute since i stopped eating my food and i have candy i have twix I have Snickers. I have a caramel, simply caramel Milky Way. And a regular Milky Way. So, I will show you guys exactly how many I choose to eat. Um, each pack of these has six in them. So, you guys will be able to tell how many I've eaten by how many are left. So I'm going to eat some of those. So I ended up having all of the Twix. Um, this is the stage where I feel guilt. I honestly was feeling sick because I ate so much. The minute I started eating the Twix, I just kept doing it. Um... I was having guilt and um, now I'm ashamed and mad at myself and I wish I could take it all back. But as it's happening, you, you just can't control it. It is by far one of the most frightening feelings in the world. Um, and I'm documenting this because... I feel like a lot of people on weight loss journeys struggle with this where they binge. It doesn't mean they have a binge disorder, but 
when you restrict yourself during a diet, you're going to have stages where you do binge or you massively overeat. No one is perfect. It just not how it happens. Um, I'm not going to say everyone does this, but there's a large quantity of people and I hear people talk about it, but I don't see people like truly dive into it. And I want to see more of that. I know it's sad to watch, but in a way I feel like documenting it makes you like process it more because normally right now I would just continue watching my show and yes, I would sulk and be super mad at myself and just be miserable, but I really wouldn't dive into why I did it and my feelings behind it. And I know why I did it. I am processing why I did it. And I know that that was only my first meal of the day. And I think that's what kind of scares me. I do have the leftovers because um, I didn't finish all the Mexican food. I'm just like so full and I just feel so disgusted with myself. Um, <sighs> the regret is real. And you guys are probably not going to see this for a long time because I'm going to be scared to post it. But reality is, reality is, this is what I'm going through today. And, you know, as of right now, in my thought process, I don't want to eat for the rest of the day. And this is what I do. You know, I'll binge and I'll be like, okay, I don't want to eat for the rest of the day. And then, oh, I do. And I eat, I eat a lot. And, uh. I don't know. It's such a bad just destruction. It's a complete destruction to my life. And I wish I could stop it. I wish I could control it more. But sometimes I'm just weak. And it's almost like sometimes I allow this to happen too. I don't know. It's a lot. But I will definitely keep you guys updated. Okay, I'm going to stop it right here for just a moment. And I want to show you the next tidbit, but I first want to pause it here because there's just too much to comment, comment on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she answered some of the questions that I had, like I'd have the question in my mind and then she'd answer it, <laughs> you know? So one of my thoughts was that how restrictive are you being if the slingshot effect is is happening and then she's just like well anybody who's restricting is going to binge and so that belief in and of itself is already problematic the pre-thought the planning the anticipation the build-up all of right. that is part of the sexy story all of that is part of the deal and i kind of have one thought of would she have eaten as much and done in the same way had she not been filming it and saying like i'm about to do this because she does have some awareness, she was able to stop, which I think is great. Right. Yeah. And then my other brain is just kind of like, well, maybe she was able to eat a little bit less because she was, and to her credit, what she was saying on the, on the video is she was processing and saying it to her audience. So maybe she was able to eat, a, stop a little sooner. Would she have just been in front of the television and opened the next candy and the next candy and the next candy? Like, would the plates have been cleaned? I don't know. I don't know her, but yeah, this is, it's a fascinating thing because there is a lot of guilt and there is a lot of shame and frustration. And some of it does come from the dieting, but clearly she has a story about when I just don't give a shit. And it reminds me kind of, of the coaching that we do with the four stages of weight loss, where you are in the early stage and you know what you're about to do, or you don't know what you're about to do. Like you just overeat and then all of a sudden you're on the other side of it and it's like, shit, shouldn't have done that. And then in the middle, it's kind of like you catch yourself overeating and you just can't stop. You're just like, I, it's a habit. I'm not stopping. And then later you're just kind of like, okay, I know what I'm about to do. I'm going to do it anyway. And then eventually you're just like, I know what I'm about to do and I'm not doing this shit. So I know that's different than binging of course, but it kind of feels like the four stages of binging too. Like we have the forethought, we have the vision, we can see this happening where we are. I also feel like this is more of an episode of emotional eating 
than binge eating because if this was a binge, she would have cleaned out the plate. She would have cleaned out the chips. She would have cleaned up the majority of the candy bars because the reason why we typically stop, speaking from personal experience, is when we run out of food. Or yes, we get that awareness. And maybe that's the stage she's in now, to your point, where she is learning more about her emotional eating and binge eating habits. And so she's able to stop prematurely from where she used to be. Because look, I don't care who you are getting to 500 pounds. There's a lot of emotional eating and binge eating going on there. And so that doesn't look like a binge to me of someone who would be at 500 pounds. So perhaps there is I mean, she mentions later in the video, but she's lost 70 pounds. So she's working on reeling this in. And she clearly recognizes she's an emotional eater, which props to her. A lot of people do not. They just kind of white knuckle and willpower their way through it. At the end of that clip, she even talks about how she's just weak sometimes. Another belief that is super unhelpful <laughs> is, ah, I just need more willpower. I just need to try harder. No. You don't. We need to get to the underlying reasons of why you're emotionally eating. Well, so if I she has the underlying reason, right? She said that she knew her underlying reason. She needs to get to the compassion piece, the understanding. Well, piece, I think, you know? I'm just wondering kind of, and I'm with you 100%. I'm just wondering, she mentioned at the very beginning how it was Mother's Day and suggested that we would be able to deduce why she was emotionally eating, which signals to me somewhere there's a relationship perhaps that is leaving her feeling defeated, not good enough. I am totally reading in between the lines here. I could be making up a complete fabricated story in my own mind, but I'm just saying something is misaligned there for her. And she's using food to make herself feel better about whatever transpired. But at its core, its underlying root is the therapy or the conversation around not good enough and learning how to meet her own emotional needs and being disappointed or feeling rejected or being upset without needing food to get her through the day or to get her through the moment. So... Well, and one other thought that I had was that she's sharing this and said in the beginning stage, um, on a day that I just don't care, she very clearly cares as she feels guilt and she feels shame and frustration. It's what we talk to our clients about all the time when they're just like, I'm just like, fuck it. And I'm like, fuck what? What's it? T tell me, tell me what you're not caring about in those moments. I'm like, oh, so you don't care about those things? Because why do you feel like shit then? Why are you feeling bad and guilty and all the things? You do care. She does care. But that story of I'm in a moment where I just don't care is relief yeah. from the incessant criticism that then allows you to do the thing when in reality, the whole I don't want to get into it, but you guys can figure it out on yourself on your own probably could have been like, if I get into it, I'm not going to emotionally eat about it. Cause then right. I Cause that's the real processing, not yeah. the eating and talking into a camera. <laughs> not that any of us are entitled to her personal life by any means, no. but you know, that is an alternative is to get into the camera and say, I really want to emotionally eat right now because here's what I'm going through and here's what I'm thinking and da da da. And that is processing. Right. Yes. And I think it's important that we share that with our viewers here so they understand where the moment is where she could have gone in a very different direction. In our program, this is where we would be having a client pull out a self-coaching worksheet and be working through the emotion so they can get to a place where they feel like they have uh, processed it with a compassionate lens and now feel better more equipped to navigate their next best step. So she has, she's close. I feel like she's close. So close. But just, yeah, I mean, but this is what it looks like. This is literally what it looks like to even be close, to be on the brink, and then at, right at the end, make a different decision and go in a different route. That pause is everything. If you can pause long enough, to break that habit loop, to have the conversation, to ask the question, 
that's your opportunity to make a different decision. Yeah. She already well, knows. Her credit, if, she's, if she's lost 70 pounds, she's having that conversation enough to be winning. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere it's happening. You know, she, she's alluded to the moments that I just don't care versus the ones I do. I just think the restriction pieces probably needs to slide in there in the conversation as well. Right. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and, and just watch this last little tidbit here. Hey, so I have finally gotten ready for the day. That's why I look different. Um, so this is the stage in my day. This is like complete honesty in this video. I'm almost like ashamed and embarrassed, but it is what it is. Okay, so this is the stage after the binge. It's been a couple hours where you're like, okay, so I want to change my life. I don't ever want to overeat again. And so in my head, I do these drastic measures where I'm like, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop eating everything processed. I'm just going to eat simple things like chicken breast baked in the oven. I'm going to have broccoli and veggies on the side and I'm going to have like brown rice and just eat super clean. That is the stage that I'm at now. So hello. Um, and this is what I constantly and continuously do all the time. I might be down over 70 pounds, but these problems and these issues are still here and I feel like they're going to be still here to stay. But as long as I am making continuous progress, that's a good thing. But currently right now in my brain, I'm just like, okay, I really need to shape up. I need to just eat clean and healthy and stop eating processed. And that's where I'm at right now. So figured I'd give that update. And obviously I'm not going to like follow through on that because this happens all the time. And then I bet you in an hour, I'll be like, actually, no, never mind. I'll continue Weight Watchers. And then an hour after that, I'll be like, actually, let's go back to intuitive eating. That's my mind. That is my brain. And that's just <laughs> what I deal with every single day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, I really like her. I think she's great. She's so <laughs> honest and so relatable and so real. That is the inside of every dieter's human. Yes. It's like a ping pong ball, just back and forth and back and forth. It's just Jesus Christ, every thought. <laughs> and to be fair, we are just laughing because we see ourselves in her so much. And it is just so true. You feel like dog shit. And then immediately you start scheming and planning to give yourself some relief from the judgment, the criticism that you're experiencing. And so it's like, I know, let me put together a plan so I don't have to feel so shitty about myself right now. And it's always the most extreme, unrealistic bullshit that got us into the binge in the first place. <laughs> Oh my God. It's so funny because that, I mean, your brain's a problem solver. It's, yeah. it's going to do it efficiently if it can. And that's what efficiency looks like in this case. Hey, you eating like shit. You feeling like shit. Why don't you eat better? Then you'll feel better. Like it's that simple, but it's not. And then the other part of your brain, the more experienced part is like, that's some bullshit. You know, that's a recipe for disaster. You should do intuitive eating. That's always been, and it's just like, okay, that's relief. And then it's like, none of this shit works. Come on. So it really is just, as we call it, circling the diet drain. You just go around and around and around until you are dizzy and exhausted from all the conversation. And oftentimes that is the beginning of the end for folks. So good for her for recognizing that and yeah. knowing herself, like know thyself so that you can change. <laughs> It's just so funny. I, I loved know. right at the end when she's like, yeah, but like, I know I'm not going to. <laughs> she's like, by the way, I will not follow through on that <laughs> in like an hour. I will change my mind. <laughs> See, but that really speaks to what uh, we often talk about is subconsciously. And in her case, consciously, she knows she's telling herself some bullshit in the moment. <laughs> and that's the belief piece right there. That is so problematic. And why most people get stuck is because look, we're always getting on track on Monday over and over and over again. We're always going to have the greatest year ever when it comes to our New Year's resolution. In the back of your mind, 
there's already so much doubt that's been planted <laughs> that you, you know, you know, yeah. so it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Anyway, I do appreciate her being vulnerable and opening up and sharing this side of what it looks like because it, that's real. Anything you want to add before we, before we I'm go? I'm just so curious. I mean, I didn't watch the whole video. Maybe I'm going to have to, but does she finish the day binging or does she finish the day like, I don't know, feeling normal or how did this end? I'm, I'm Okay. Okay. It's not a long video. So if you're sitting on the edge of your seat, then to be fair, I didn't watch all of it either, so it'll be surprising for both of us. I know where she goes with this in the next few minutes, but I didn't watch till the end. So listen, I don't want to. I don't want to leave you hanging. Of <laughs> asking, you shall receive. It's been about, I want to say, about three hours since I last spoke to you guys. I'm still feeling super sick from what I ate earlier. I think it's just because I'm not used to that type of food because. Honestly, back in the day, I could have ate even more. I decided I'm not going to be eating the leftovers that I had from the Mexican food because even just thinking about it was making me feel worse and nauseous. So I'm just going to throw it away. Um, I did end up taking a little bit of a nap. It was like 40 minutes. Felt pretty good. And then the weather woke me up because it got super windy. I thought a tornado was blowing through. So, And as you could tell, I've spent my whole day <laughs> in bed and I'm going to spend my whole night in bed as well. Um, the only thing I drank today, which is not good, is maybe half of this, and that is it. It's caffeine free. Ew. I've had the worst. No water, nothing, and I could tell because it kind of feels like my kidneys hurt, and that usually happens if I drink too little or too much. So I'm probably going to be having some water here in a minute. Today is not good. Today is not good, and my mind is already back at okay i'm just gonna do weight watchers everything's gonna be totally fine i'm gonna continue weight watchers i'm actually gonna follow through tomorrow's gonna be day number one again that's my mind right now that is my mind and that's just what i go through every day all day okay not every day it used to be every day i'm glad it's not anymore okay you guys so Outfit number the next thing I'm eating, and before anyone says anything, yes, I changed my clothes again because okay. I filmed another video. Sometimes I'll film like three or four videos a day, just depending on my mood. Sometimes I'll just film one, but I always make sure to change my clothes if I remember to, because I don't want to be wearing the same thing in every video, but I had to get something off my chest. You guys have either saw that or will be seeing that. Who knows? So next thing I'm having is a whole box of the Pastoroni. It is an angel hair pasta with herbs flavor. It is a whole bowl, literally. A whole bowl. And right now, this is more so like an emotional eating moment because I'm frustrated because of the, the video I just had to film. Frustrated me. And let's see, is food going to make me feel better? Okay, so I really don't Good. think that it her day simple. ended, started in it a is. binge or ended in a binge. Not really. really. Like, you I, don't I feel like I ended in a binge or emotional. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Yeah, I, I just, I think that. The first was an emotional. I mean, that was a big meal, but with some candy bars, but I wouldn't quantify it as a binge. And I don't think like a whole box of whatever the fuck that was. I don't was, know what else she or eats after the pastaroni, though, to be fair. <laughs> I don't either, but she did say it's an emotional eat. Let's see if this makes me feel better. Um, I, I just think that that's a typical overeating episode, but um, yeah. But I do appreciate her commentary and nuance there. It sounds like she kind of got through it for the most part, unless it turns around later. But I feel like my status, my curiosity has been satisfied. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, I guess any final thoughts then as we wrap up this particular reaction video? I guess if you are at that level of awareness, then you have a choice. You can get into it or you can eat about it. And both of those choices are going to leave you uncomfortable, but only one of them 
is going to help you stop binge eating for good. Truth. Yeah. Change is hard, but only one of those paths actually ends in genuine fulfillment and feeling proud of yourself and inching closer to the person you want to become. And she's on a a path. I think she can do it. So I hope so. But I appreciate her being willing to share that. I hope our viewers found it helpful or interesting at minimum. And if you see yourselves in her story, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. As always, thanks for viewing and we will catch you on the next one. Y'all have a great day.